who is with us today. It's really a great pleasure to see people again face to face and not through screens. And thank you very much, uh, Valentina and Marianne, for the fantastic job that makes that possible, because I know it was very difficult to bring some of you here, and uh, here is the result. So it's uh, very enjoyable, and I'm sure we will enjoy a lot during this week exchanging uh, about uh, IMR. And um, the, the just a very small number of slides to to explain to you where the, the origin of the course is, is coming from. As you know, IMR is a growing global public health menace, and uh, it has something very specific, that is, which is that uh, basically it's a very strongly one else question. And given that in 2015, the WHO issued a global action plan for the adoption, deployment, and implementation of uh, country IMR national action plans to fight this uh, really big problem, a little bit before COVID, of course. And uh, given that, uh, in 2018, the Merieux Foundation and the University of Paris decided to support the critical effort in joining their expertise and capabilities, and uh, they decided to set up this course. So, as a matter of fact, this is a uh, long-standing effort of the Merieux Foundation to organize courses of that type. Every 10 years, they set up a new, a new one in 1999. They, they set up the first one on vaccinology together with the University of Geneva. And in 2009, they set up a second one with the London School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene on diagnostics, and so this is uh, the third of this course, and uh, these courses are run every year since, except for the, for the COVID, uh, of course. Uh, so we hope that this second edition uh, will be not the last, but uh, the beginning of a long series like for the other courses. And um, as I said, the inaugural edition uh, was held in 2019, and uh, it advocated the value of the One Health approach to fight against IMR and build capacity for critical decision making in low and middle income countries through education, partnership, and network. And this is very important that, uh, for us that uh, you people who are coming from all over create a network while, while you are here, and we will make every possible effort for that. And uh, after the course, we will try to, to keep by regular web uh, meetings to, to keep you uh, as a network and to keep you connected, for instance, with those who were participating to the first course a few years ago, a couple of years ago. And because of the success of this first edition and the the, the, the return we had from the participants, it was decided to hold this one from November 1 to 5, 2021, and this is why we are here today. And so the program is based on the five WHO IMR GAP objective, and this is really the, the basic structure of, of, this, of, of this course. That, uh, for each day, we will try to stick, the program will try to stick to uh, one of the objectives of WHO in the, nation, in the Global Action Plan, to improve awareness and understanding of IMR on the first day, to strengthen the knowledge and evidence base through surveillance and research on the second, to reduce the incidence of infections through effective sanitation agents and infection prevention on the third, to optimize the use of antimicrobial medicine in human and animal health, and last, to develop the economic case for sustainable investments that may take account of the need of all countries. But let me be very clear. Uh, you will have talks in the morning, but in the afternoon it will be you that will work and it will be you that will make the most important essence of this course. Uh, you will have case studies and you will have to work on this case study and present the results of your group to, to the audience. And the, the most important part is what you will, the input you will put, you will put in the course. 
so I think I will leave the floor to Hubert for the rest of uh, this presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Antoine, um, and a very warm welcome to, uh, to all of you. I'm glad to see all these different faces from, I think, more than 25 different countries uh, here this morning, uh, very early on. Um, what I'd like to do, basically, is turn, turn towards you, the audience, because it's, uh, the whole week is all about you, basically, and we are there to, to guide and to help with all the experts that are going to have their presentations in the, in the morning. Um, like you're sitting there, you're an extremely heterogeneous group of people, basically. What binds you is something about AMR, but all the rest is probably very, very different. Um, you have, are coming from different continents, you have different backgrounds, uh, you probably have different roles in the fight against AMR in your own countries. Um, um, and you are probably also in your own uh, career development in different stages. We have very young people at the early stage of, in their career, and we have people who are more experienced, and all of them are, are here and uh, are part of the audience. So in a broad simplification, I, I made this slide. Yeah, the, the, we are all in different stages of, of, of our own development, and I simplified it on this slide. Uh, there are those who watch things happen, what I call the voyeur in, in France, or the watcher, or maybe something in between the, the stalker and the watcher. These guys are usually doing surveillance. Um, there are those who wonder what happens in the world, the, the thinkers, those who generate ideas and hypotheses. And then you have what I call the entrepreneurs, those who make things happen. And some of you might have all these three competencies in yourself, and others are more clearly aligned to one of those. But what we have to work through is go towards action, because all our initiatives should be directed uh, towards action, towards intervention, and towards implementation in order to change the world, and in particular the world of antimicrobial resistance. Um, I have prepared, on the next slide, we have prepared six questions to get to know the audience a little bit better and to for you to get to know yourself and uh, this is a, a questionnaire which is real time so I'm asking you basically to connect through your phone or through your laptop uh, or iPad to um, to this site which is mentioned over there or the link that has been sent to you yesterday evening or you can also use the QR code it's it's readable from the back of the of the, um, uh, this room, we've tried it. So I'll give you just uh, 15 seconds to, to make the connection and then you will see the first slide appear with the first question. In which geographical region are you working? And on the top right, we have the number of people who responded. We should be able to reach over 30. I'm not sure everyone is, is connected yet. But there is, there is a clear picture which is already visible here. It's one third, one third, one third. Asia, Africa, and, and Europe. Some people from the Americas. And not many people from uh, the Pacific Oceania region. So we are 27. Maybe we'll move to the next question. The gender distribution. Male, female, non-binome, or other. We're moving towards 50-50, <laughs> which is also interesting, and which is a good thing. 29 respondents. And then the third question. How did you hear about this course? From friends, from colleagues, international organization, through the Fleming Fund or the Mirio Network, other organizations? It's 
So we have a one third uh, from the Fleming Fund, which is not surprising because I think we have 16 Fleming Fund fellows over here out of approximately 40 participants. Uh, so that's very well represented. And then it's from friends and colleagues, basically, that you get to know this course. Um, and then the next slide. How long have you been working on antimicrobial resistance? So we have quite a significant number of people, one third, that have been working for more than 10 years. But we have also almost half of you guys uh, have just started working on them since a couple of years. And I think that's also the target of this course. I think to have this broad diversity of experience together in one room and later on in the afternoon in one working group. And then probably the last slide and the last question Your, your background, so what is your main activity? Many people are doing uh, all different things at the same time, but what would you consider to be your main activity? Is it research, is it public health, is it clinical, whether veterinary or medical, laboratory or other? So many of you are involved in uh, one third in, in, in research, 30% uh, or so in, in public health, which is of course extremely broad, 20% um, laboratory. So again, a sort of diversity also in terms of background and fields where you're working, which should help in the discussions and the exchanges that we're going, we are going to have this morning and in, in the afternoon. And then is there another question? The last one, I think. What is your main expectation of this course? And just mention only one. You might have more of these points, but what for you is the most important um, thing that you will bring home after one week? What is surprising. So skills and knowledge are at par, it's around 20%, and networking is, is basically what we're hoping to achieve is, is connecting people basically who are all working on the same field and trying to obtain and, 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 and put into place the same kind of actions in order to reduce uh, resistance to spread in the different countries. So I think that's the last question. Um, yes. So uh, with that, I think uh, it's clear that we have a very diverse, uh, diverse group and you are very diverse. and. Um, um, of course, you were sort of selected uh, in order to get this type of audience, and I'm glad we succeeded, basically, to have all representations from the different fields.